into new nine volt. <laughs> There's a lot of fun bells and whistles down here, but um, I actually have something new over here that you guys can see, this kind of orange thing. It's, it's sort of a big button that I was using to play back some sounds during the, uh, that little Van Halen cover I did. There was a little synthesizer sound coming out. And that was from this thing. It's, it's essentially a giant play button, right? I send it a sound to play in like an mp3 format or something and I stomp on it really hard and it plays that sound to you, okay? You wouldn't think much could go wrong with like one button, right? It's quite simple. But what I didn't realize when I got this is that they come with sort of like stock demonstration sounds from the factory. So I was on tour with um, Tommy Emmanuel earlier this year. Do you guys know Tommy? Woo! Fantastic. The greatest greatest guitar player of all time, man. Um, we've actually just announced we're releasing an EP together, by the way, which will be out in September, so keep an eye out for that. Um, thank you, one person. Appreciate it. <laughs> but I was on tour with Tommy, and uh, I was in the middle of this very sort of sensitive ballad, you know, a song with a pin drop silence in a beautiful theatre in Southern California. And at that perfect sweet spot of the song, you know, I wandered over to stage left and my cable here sort of accidentally grabbed the button that, that turns the bank, you know, selects the sound. So just at that pin drop moment of the song in complete silence. Come on! <laughs> like, who wants that? Like, why did they think, let's put that on our unit, because everyone's going to want to use that. So I'm making a point of doing that at every show to give it some purpose. <laughs> so ridiculous. But speaking of sensual ballads, I would like to play something new for you right now. Is that okay? A new thing? Fantastic. Well, this is a cover song uh, from the band The 1975, a UK kind of pop band. Yeah. I really fell in love with one of their kind of slower tunes, a little waltz, which I'm going to play for you right now. Um, but uh, it, it will actually appear on my next solo record, but uh, Tommy Emmanuel and I did a duet version of it that will be on that EP as well, which I think comes out in September. This is a little tune called uh, Be My Mistake, and uh, in order to play this, I'm going to do what all acoustic guitar players at acoustic guitar venues should do in the 90s, which is sit on a stool in the middle of the stage and look artistically pensive. <laughs> I need a flannel shirt or something like that. <laughs>
you are so kind, you are so kind indeed. Is the wine good? Yeah. You like the wine? What if you have red or white? Red, oh, red or white, both. <laughs> I, like that. I might have to try that later. Well, as I said, it's great to be back at the City Winery. Trevor and I played at the, the Nashville one um, about a week ago. Yay, Nashville City Winery. I don't know, but great. <laughs> it was a lot more humid. My hair ended up looking like Weird Al Yankovic at the end of the night. But the reason that I'm out here right now doing this little tour here is to do my first ever headline solo tour of the United States. It's a pretty big deal. Thanks. Thank you so much for coming out. It really means a lot that you came out, especially after the pandemic and everything, really, and on a Sunday night. Wonderful. Um, I'm promoting my new album. You guys remember albums, yes? Physical collections of music with more than one song in a row. Well, I released a live album during the pandemic, which was quite interesting. Uh, I felt there was a gap in the market for live music. <laughs> the album's called Shows and Distancing. Well, live in the USA. Okay, every single track was recorded live in the United States, and it really is my love letter to the US, because I've been very fortunate as a British guy to have the opportunity to play in this country, not just solo, but, but with the, as the sort of, um, let me explain how this kind of works. You need someone with a lot of power to say, this guy's important and I want him to play here. And for me, that person was Justin Hayward from the Moody Blues. Any Moody Blues fans in the house? Fantastic. Because back in 2013, Justin told me he was putting a, a tour together and wanted me to be a part of it. And that really was my gateway into this country because it's very difficult to get in here as a foreign person to play shows like this. So um, a lot of these uh, recordings on the live album were recorded uh, with Justin Hayward live, uh, my opening sets, good things I open for him as well as play alongside him. So I really have him to thank indirectly for the record. And the song that I'm gonna play right now is actually uh, the opening track from the record. I got a wonderful take of it at a beautiful chapel uh, in New York City back in 2019. A beautiful chapel overlooking Central Park. It was a very memorable show. The, the album starts with about four or five songs from that show. And this song right here, tonight I'm going to dedicate to each and every one of you. And the reason for that is because it was, it was inspired by Michael Hedges. Do you guys know Michael Hedges? The late great guitar player. And I stole this guitar tuning from him. Check out how sexy this sounds. Spooky, right? Okay. The interesting thing about this tuning, Michael Hedges was a master of these crazy alternate tunings. Um, I discovered that he, he, he played this tuning on a song called Dirge, and it had this, this sort of minor second interval, this sort of semitone interval in it. That means there's two notes that are just one note apart, right? Like that Jaws soundtrack. Right? Now by itself, that sounds horrible. <laughs> but in the context of this particular key and these scales, you get these really beautiful sounding effects. So I wrote this song dedicated to Michael at a time of great loss and separation in my own life. But as we've come back from this two years of bullshit and we're all together again, I want to relate that and dedicate it to you tonight. So this one's for you. It's about togetherness and celebration. And it's called Reverie. I hope you like it.
Make some noise if you want another slow song. Make some noise if you want a crazy fast song. Oh, you're a bunch of nerds. I love it. I love it. It's like sports. Okay, about this, this point of the show, guys, I always like to pay homage to one of my influences because I'm 32 years old, folks, okay? I'm 33 next week, so I'm 32 years old. Oh, it's a baby! It's a little baby! But at 32 slash 33, I'm, I'm at that age where there's an older generation of guitar players who I grew up listening to still out there actively making music, making amazing music and touring, touring the US, touring the world. But there's also a younger generation coming up who have come from the sort of YouTube, TikTok kind of world, right? And I think it's really important to share some of the influences that inspired people like Trevor and myself um, so that maybe they might discover a new uh, guitar player, a new musician, and perhaps you might as well. Have any of you heard of a guitar player from Canada named uh, Don Ross? Yeah. A few people, fantastic. Well, this is a little lesson for the rest of you then, okay? So Don is a real fingerstyle guitar pioneer from Canada, a really wonderful guy. And he's certainly composed quite a few tunes that have become sort of standards, I suppose, in, in sort of the community that Trevor and I inhabit. You know, the weird community where we don't play with guitar picks, we have our fingers and we have sometimes a long thumbnail that's a little weird. Like a crack spoon. <laughs> giving away too much information about my personal life. <laughs> so, this tune right here is usually performed on a baritone guitar. Now, a baritone guitar is a little bit like a regular guitar, but it's a bit longer. It's not quite a bass guitar, it's just got a longer neck, so you can tune the guitar lower and get a lower, deeper sound. But uh, because I've come from the United Kingdom, the land of... Um, airport strikes and excess baggage allowance. I'm going to play this on my regular single guitar right now. I'm going to play this song in the key of D minor, which as we all know, is the saddest of all the keys. Are you ready to rock? Are you ready to folk? Hell yeah, folk yeah. That's good, that's good. When I say beans, you say beans, 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 beans. 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 